Hey everyone, this is BoxBrain. I'm making a new game called Goblin Menace, uh, kind of a working title right now. Um, so still kind of figuring out what game, this game is about, but it's kind of like uh, Stardew Valley meets Minecraft meets um, Diablo 2 action RPG meets some kind of real-time strategy game. So kind of a mix of everything, but uh, basic idea is that I haven't yet found a game where I feel like I'm fully immersed in a medieval sandbox. I like to make a game where you can really run any business, whether that's a blacksmith or a farming sim. Uh, but you can also go out into the world, explore dungeons, caves, mountains, fight dragons, and even lead an army to conquer other kingdoms. So fairly ambitious. We'll see how this goes. Um, today I wanted to just kind of show a quick tutorial. Um, about how we can implement these houses over here. Uh, you saw here with the starting house, if you just go inside, the roof kind of hides away. Uh, and then if you go behind the house, uh, you get uh, this roof that's kind of faded uh, or kind of just letting the player be able to see inside the house. Uh, same thing happens when you peek through a window, which I think is a nice touch as well. Uh, and if you go inside, then you get to see the interiors of the house. I feel like this type of building design is the most immersive. You're never like taken into a loading screen uh, and changing scenes to the whole separate environment it just for the interior of a building. You can still see outside the building um, and the whole world, whether you're inside a house or out in the world, it's the same world. You know, you're never kind of leaving the, you know, the environment. So I like that immersive element of this type of design. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at how this is made. Um, so I made these couple of widgets. Uh, one's called a hide area, one's a fade area, just for kind of hiding and you know making the roof uh, hidden or transparent. Um, so I'm gonna show how that works uh, very quickly. So let's just put in a player character so we have uh, something to move around with and then I'll give it a uh, camera so that we can actually follow the player around, uh, make sure the camera is current. Uh, so I'm creating a whole new scene just to kind of show how this works. So let's test that. All right, okay, cool. So now we have a player that can actually move around. Um, I'm gonna put some elements into the scene. Let's just create like a rectangle in there. Um, all right, so let's make this kind of reddish, um, a little bigger off to the right. Okay, so now we run the scene. The player can move around and we now have like a rectangle here. Awesome, okay. Um, I'm gonna make the player in front of the rectangle. Okay, so really easy to use these two um, scenes, uh, the fade area and the hide area. I kind of think the, of them as like little widgets. Uh, I don't think fade area and hide area are industry terms, I just kind of came up with them, but uh, super easy. If you just put it as a child of color rectangle, um, that will essentially work. And then you just give it a collision box. Um, so let's say, okay, so we got a collision here. We give it a rectangular shape. Um, so we're gonna make it so that if the player walks to the top part of the rectangle, we're gonna make it fade. Uh, and then same thing for hiding this little rectangle, we're gonna create another collision box. Okay, collision shape 2D. And let's give it another rectangle shape. Okay, so if the player walks towards the bottom of this rectangle, it's gonna make it hide, actually. Uh, and then if the player walks in the middle, nothing is gonna happen. Uh, so we can test this out. And that's really all you had to do. Uh, I'm gonna just rename this into like hide area. Um, but the code kind of takes care of all the functionality I'll show you how that works in, in a sec, but let's just test it out to show you how this works in action. So the player walks towards the top, this fade area, the rectangle fades out. Um, the player walks into the hide area, the rectangle hides away, right? So you can imagine if you walk into the interior of a house, the roof is gone. And then if you walk underneath the roof outside of the house, the roof is faded. All right, super easy, uh, very, once you make these things, they're really easy to use. Um, okay, so now let's take a look at how this works with the code. Uh, the code, I think it's, you know, I'm quite happy with it. Um, I made it fairly clean, um, but basically, um, 
there's a fade area and a hide area script. Uh, the hide area is really easy. So um, all you have to define for these two, uh, they both extend from a base class called transform area. But all you have to define these two subclasses is just uh, getting the behavior. So for hiding, it's just hide and show. And then for fading, it's a little more complex, but it's just changing the alpha to 0.5. You can change that to whatever you like. So 0.5 just means it's like halfway transparent. Uh, and then unfading is like changing it back to one. Um, and I added this little recursive loop here because um, sometimes you're not, uh, so by default, it will make the parent node fade in and out, but sometimes the parent node doesn't have a fade behavior. So there's a check here for whether it can fade or not, namely whether the modulate property is in there. Um, and then if it cannot fade, then it's gonna go through its children and make all the children fade. So that happens when um, you have like a roof node, but the roof node is actually made of a, a bunch of like child nodes that are all tile maps and you can make the tile maps fade. Uh, but most of the action actually happens in this base class uh, for transform area. Um, so let's take a look at how that works. All right, so yeah, I the transform area is also fairly simple. Um, so. Uh, it just basically connects uh, it, you know, it's the script is attached to uh, area 2D. So it just connects the signals it emits to itself uh, for body entered and body exited. Um, and then when uh, the a body enters, it checks if it is the player. And if it is the player, then um, it performs some kind of action on the parent, uh, transform action on the parent. Uh, and so in this base class, these are just uh, kind of abstract methods that are not defined. So it's on, only in the subclasses that those transform methods are uh, defined. So for something like hiding, it just defines it as being hide, hidden and shown. Um, and so that just means that if the player walks into the area, it will hide it. And then if the player walks out of the area, it will show it. Uh, what's nice about this is that um, all of the signals are already handled in this kind of ready method here. So you don't have to go into the area 2D and try to attach the signals or have to deal with that. All you have to do is drag and drop this scene underneath whatever node um, you want to fade or hide. Um, just make it as child. Um, yeah, super easy. Let me know what you think. I think it's a pretty cool widget that's easy to use, um, especially if you're making a top-down 2D RPG um that um where you want buildings to be able to hide and fade but i can imagine a ton of other applications for this as well um, the same is used here for this tree uh, the same widget is used for this uh, well roof here as well right so it can be applied to a wide variety of situations